if your tool, your widget, your piece of equipment that you're involved in the, in the design of, maintenance of, support of, uses air or oil or water, trying to keep things out, trying to keep things in, somewhere along the line it requires a seal. And the hard fact is, is that if you don't have the right seal or if that seal fails, you got a problem. And along with that problem is to put into consideration the fact that the seal is also often one of the lowest cost components in your tool, in your equipment, in your widget. To that, it's really important that you know what you're getting with your seals. Today we're going to start with the simplest of all seals and that being the O-ring. And I will st also start by saying not all O-rings are created equal. Um, different materials, different hardnesses, different curing processes. Uh, they're not just round, they're not just squishy and just, just to fill in a hole. Okay? Now having said that, many of you all also know a lot of the basics when it comes to O-rings, but one of the things that I want to focus on today is what Parker Hannafin states is the number one cause for O-ring failure, and that is compression set. A compression set is a term that's used for one of those physical properties that gets measured with every batch of material that gets, gets produced by reputable O-ring manufacturers, which is maybe clue number one. If you're buying O-rings, from a manufacturer that does not test every batch and every lot and has full traceability, okay, that's a red flag. Okay? Let's go on the premise that you're working with people that do have full batch and lot control of every material that they, that they produce. Okay? Tensile strength, elongation, specific gravity, TR10 values, these are all different physical properties that get measured. Compression set is one that, in my experience, I will validate what Parker is telling us, is probably the most important of all of them. If you don't know what compression set is, in most simplest form, it's taking O-ring material, squishing it between platens, applying pressure to squeeze it 25%, and then baking it in an oven for a prescribed period of time, taking it out, undoing the platen, pull out the material, and measure how much did it come back. Now, in a perfect world, it comes back all the way. Okay? Comes back all the way, it has taken no compression set. Also factor in that when you design O-rings for seals, okay, you are uh, um, uh, utilizing a squeeze rate that will vary from 10, 15, to 20 percent. So in the scenario where you have an O-ring that takes a compression set and it doesn't come back 10%, 20%, 30%, what does that do to that design squeeze that you have put in there? So now, similar to other variables uh, in, in your designs, now in, in essence you have another form of uh, uh, tolerance stack up. So let's dive a little bit more into compression set and what are we talking about? Compression set values vary widely by material. You use different materials for different applications, from, from NBRs for a lot of hydraulic uh, applications, oil, petroleum uh, uses and the like. You, know, you, you use HNBR for a lot of the same things, but when you get involved in higher temperatures uh, uh, or different, different types of fluids, uh, some compatibility issues, you use EPM uh, for, again, uh, diff different applications, uh, oftentimes for ozone resistance, external uses, uh, for, for, for breaks and, and, and some of those applications, uh, and, and FKM. Uh, FKM uh, is, is used oftentimes for chemical compatibility and for uh, high temperature applications. Probably the four most common O-ring materials in the industrial market. Okay? Yes, there's silicone, yes, there's aflas, yes, there's neoprene and others, but these, these are the four common. Okay? Within these four common materials is a variance in the amount of compression set they just inherently take. Okay? Start with NBR. Well, one thing to note about NBR is how it's processed. There is a difference between a standard sulfur cure, which the world has known for, for decades, okay, and a peroxide cure material. 
A peroxide cure material is a step up from the sulfur cure, and one of the reasons for that is what you can see in the illustration here is the compression set. Under standard 100, 100 degrees C testing for 70 hours, you can expect a good sulfur cure to still have 15 to 25% compression set. Peroxide cure material, you're going to reduce that to 10 to 15%. Significant improvement uh, for a lot of face seals, uh, for, for both static as well as, as well as dynamic applications. You go to an HNBR, which is considered an upgrade to, in the NBR family, you'll see very similar compression set characteristics to the peroxide cure. Okay? If peroxide, or excuse me, if compression set is all that we're dealing with, peroxide cure might be an alternative because there's also a, a premium on price to go to the HNBR. Now, another reason to go to the HNBR would be for higher temps and for other application concerns. Look at EPDM. Again, EPDM, uh, something very similar to the sulfur cured, 15 to 20% uh, compression set on the EPDM material. Uh, FKM, which gets tested at 200 degrees, so you're not exactly comparing the same thing, but because it's a higher temp material, it's oftentimes tested at 200 degrees C, you're looking at 15 to 20% compression set. Now, I want to point out that these compression set figures are also going to vary on what, they're, uh, what and how uh, the methods are that are being used to test it. Okay? Uh, slabs, buttons, uh, uh, dog bones, uh, uh, oftentimes when you're just testing the material, it's not done with the actual O-ring, which brings us then to the next set. When you're looking at compression set values by O-ring, you're going to get some wide variables as well. Okay? Taking, it, taking an O-ring material that has been molded into a shape gone through all its curing processes and everything like that, you're going to get variants, if nothing else, due to sheer size alone. Okay? A very thin, small cross-section O-ring to a big, fat O-ring. Okay? What are those values going to differ? And you're going to see significant differences from the O-ring to just the material. At 100 degrees for 70 hours, a standard NBR, a 16th cross-section, can take 100% set. Okay? Uh, the fatter or the thicker cross sections take a 60% set. You go to a peroxide cure, okay, the thicker cross sections, not quite as much difference, but when you get to those thin cross sections, there's a lot of applications out there that use the small cross sections, okay, 90%. Now, that 10 points can make a difference of sealing and not, not sealing. HNBR, again, a little bit better improvement, 85 to 60, 85 being the, the thin cross section. So wide variances, when, when you're looking at physical properties and when you're looking at compression set from your suppliers, understand what are you looking at? Am I looking at raw material, slabs, buttons, dog bones, or am I looking at actual O-rings, okay? And what are those figures and those values that you want to be able to measure to, okay? Size and cross-section do matter. Where I'm going with this, beware of low-cost materials, okay? Not all O-rings are created equal. Okay? There are differences, and low-cost materials oftentimes will impact your compression set values. Know what you're getting.